Hello everyone, this is Anthony John Agnello, Senior Social Editor at Games Radar Plus, and I am here today with staff writer Dave Roberts for our video review of Battlefield 1. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, I've been in the trenches over the past week, so to speak, the video game trenches, as it were, uh, playing through the single player levels and various multiplayer modes, and I am here to report that Battlefield 1 is pretty dang good. So, take me through exactly what Battlefield 1 is. Okay, so Battlefield 1 takes us back uh, over a hundred years to World War 1. It was a bloody, senseless battle where millions died over a conflict thanks to the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. The old world clashed with the new industrial form of war. You have automatic weapons, tanks, airplanes, and more all effectively making their debut in this war. It's a fascinating era that doesn't really get explored very often in video games. And uh, Battlefield 1 embraces the period, uh, at least on a surface level, uh, while still trying to fit everything within this sort of fun framework of, of combat that the series has been known for over the, over the years. So how does that work, taking the historical elements but giving it that Battlefield-style sense of fun? I mean, these are weapons that jammed and broke down all the time, so how does it actually capture a sense of realism here? So, so it's still very much a Battlefield game, so it's still very focused on those immediate thrills over 100% accuracy. Uh, there are moments in, in the single player story where your tech may shut down for um, narrative reasons, but when, it, just in general fighting and multiplayer, you won't have to worry about your rifles jamming or your plane breaking down mid-flight because the engine just can't handle the, the weight of the weapons on your airship, which is a thing that happened in World War I. Um, what Battlefield does get right, though, more than anything else, uh, is the tone. Um, it's a tone that permeates the whole experience, really. So Battlefield 1 takes a reverential approach, providing historical context with single-player war stories, as well as uh, the multiplayer operations matches. The soundtrack absolutely soars, too, uh, providing both a sense of adventure and dread while you're playing. Uh, I was really taken by how Battlefield 1 seems to recognize the gravity and scope of this devastating war, presenting it to the player even while it's preparing them for these chaotic, uh, ridiculously scaled multiplayer matches. So before we get to Battlefield's signature multiplayer matches, tell me a little bit more about the single-player campaign. Battlefield's had a really rocky history with its campaign modes. Is this one any good? Uh, the single-player mode in Battlefield 1 is called War Stories, and rather than telling a single coherent narrative, it breaks each of its missions into distinct chapters, and each of its chapters follow a single character across various theaters of war. You start out as a member of the Harlem Hellfighters in a prologue mission that's really effective in selling the utter devastation the war caused. And once you finish that one, you'll unlock five more that you can complete in any order that run the gamut from a tank operator on the Western Front to a pilot attempting to scam his way into the British Air Force. Uh, it's incredibly varied and puts you in even more roles as the stories continue. Uh, they all play into battlefield strengths by focusing on larger, freeform combat areas, often plopping you in the middle of a big map and asking you to find some important MacGuffin or taking out a specific officer. Uh, there's also a greater focus on stealth here, as you're often outmatched and outnumbered until you slink around and take out as many guards as you can before they spot you. Uh, there's some spectacles here, including one particularly impressive battle on top of a Zeppelin, but those scripted Battlefield 4 slash Call of Duty moments are very rare here. The stories are interesting, and they're often intimate, and they focus on real human struggles faced during the war, and that's all great, but the problem is, is that they often feel slight. Stages rip maps and even capture points directly from the multiplayer modes. Uh, enemy AI isn't terribly bright. 
I hit some weird bugs when I respawned a few times, and it even crashed on me once when I tried to re reload from a checkpoint. And uh, as much as I enjoyed the stories that these missions tell, uh, I wished it gave each one a little more time to breathe. They're only about an hour long a piece. Uh, the tank mission's a little longer, but most of them are about an hour. And just when you're about to get invested into the characters, into the into the particular missions that each character is undergoing, it's all over. It's weird to hear you praise Battlefield's single player so much. It's very, very rare. Uh, how does the multiplayer fare? Uh, it's Battlefield. I mean, it's it's good. Um, Battlefield it has always been about those large scale moments in war, even with Battlefield 1942, all all those years ago. And Dice does a really good job translating that kind of combat to the rudimentary tech and scope of World War One. Um, interestingly, the crappier, less reliable weapons of the era actually make the game way more fun for me. Uh, it seems like it's a lot easier to survive the inevitable uh, meat grinder that these 64-player matches tend to devolve into. Uh, planes and tanks move slower, guns have more spread on their fire, uh, you'll actually have to use iron sights rather than just a single laser dot on your scope uh, in order to aim. Uh, it, it makes combat much more personal, uh, in your face, very aggressive, but it also feels more fair to less experienced players. As far as the multiplayer modes go, uh, you have smaller modes like Team Deathmatch and War Pigeons. Uh, War Pigeons is actually an interesting twist on Capture the Flag that has you hunting down a live pigeon and sending it off with a message, which the enemy can then shoot down if they can get to it in time. Uh, but the real meat here in Battlefield 1 is the new Operations mode, and that, that takes a handful of massive conquest maps and strings them together to create these huge huge interconnected battles. Uh, attackers attempt to push forward to hold points, defenders attempt to stop them, uh, the attackers have several attempts to do so, and if the attackers win, they push forward to another map and everything carries over. Uh, and each time the attackers lose, they get to use what's called a behemoth, which is like a giant zeppelin or battleship will appear on the field, and that you can use its guns to just pound the enemy into submission. Uh, these battles can easily take over an hour to finish, and it seems like a huge time commitment, and it is, uh, but it's it's really effective in selling the enormous scope of these battles, making you really feel like you're part of a much larger conflict. So it sounds like Battlefield 1 is really a course correction for the series after Battlefield Hardline, and that it's, it's just really solid. What's your final score? So yeah, I do wish the single player modes uh, were a little more fleshed out, but what's here is a ton of fun, and the turn of the century setting and reverent tone actually meshes rather well with Battlefield's ridiculously chaotic large-scale combat, and for that, I give it a 4 out of 5. Everybody, if you want to read more about Battlefield 1, go to gamesradar.com to read Dave's more expansive review, and follow us right here at youtube.com slash gamesradar. We are the knights of the sky, the ghosts in the desert, and the rats in the mud. These are our stories.